Breaking news here on Patriots today. I am Harrison Graham. Mac Jones, the era is over. The New England Patriots have traded Mac Jones to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Ian Rappaport first on the report. The compensation is a sixth round pick. We're going to break it all down here on the channel, but this is why you subscribe. Regardless of when news comes in, whether we're in the office in our studios or whether we're at our house, we're going to break down the news for you. So hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. Free agency starts tomorrow. It's going to be a whirlwind. Do not miss out on any of it as the Patriots are going to be making moves. All right. Mac Jones officially out of New England as he heads to Jacksonville to be Trevor Lawrence's backup. Uh, kind of interesting. Of course, they were in the same draft in 2021. Lawrence, the first pick. Mac Jones, the 15th pick. It, it had to be done, right? Uh, we saw the report, was it Friday, that uh, New England was open to trading Mac, which I think they've been open to trading Mac all offseason. Uh, but, you know, maybe they were trying to get some more feelers out there. Uh, Rappaport says that four teams were interested. Unclear who those other teams were at this point in time. But, look, I just think everyone needed a fresh start. The Patriots are obviously going to go in a new direction at starting quarterback. Mac Jones keeping him around as a backup, as a former first-round pick. A, unnecessary when you a have Bailey Zappi and B can go bring in a you know vet like vet quarterback like Jacoby Brissett or someone like that and B just I don't think healthy for whoever the new guy is like just just rip the bandaid off it, the last two years of the Mac Jones experience just did not go well and I don't think that's all on Mac I think. Bill Belichick did a poor job after Josh McDaniels left in 2021 of replacing Mac. He, he just did not do an adequate job. He went with a Matt Patricia, Joe Judge combo, two guys that don't even have offensive backgrounds, and it was a disaster. And they tried to salvage it in 2023 by bringing in Bill O'Brien, a solid coach, but it was like it was just clear that it was too late. And then you combine that with the fact that this team has not had good wide receivers. The offensive line has been spotty at times. Um, it just fell apart under Mac. Now, certainly Mac did not play well and he regressed, and that's not all on coaching. He has to hold his uh his blame in that as well. But the point of this is that going in a new direction was blatantly obvious, really about midway through this year, even before we knew Belichick was gone. But extremely clear once the offseason got here. You got the number three pick, an opportunity to draft a franchise quarterback. Um, it's just, it, it was time. It was time. Grade the Mac Jones era. A, B, C, D, or F. One playoff appearance, rookie of the year. Wasn't all bad. Um, drop a letter grade down in the comments below. A, B, C, D, or F for Mac Jones. I'd probably go D+. Plus. It wasn't a complete disaster, but you can't give it a passing grade when you're trading a first-round pick three years in. Um, obviously, you know, year one, I would have given a B plus, A minus. Win rookie of the year, make the playoffs. Um, that was better than expected. But these last two years were far worse than expected. So uh, D+, plus, certainly not uh, a great uh, great run under Mac Jones. But it is what it is. The Patriots are in a good position, both salary cap wise and draft pick wise, to reset at the quarterback position and add key players at other positions. So it's a win win. And I think it's a win for Mac Jones. Listen, go be a backup for a year, be reliable, be a good teammate uh, in Jacksonville under Trevor Lawrence. I think that's a good fit with Doug Peterson uh, in that offense. I think uh, stylistically that fits Mac as well. Um, I, I like the fit uh, for Mac. I, I think the Patriots did right by him here to send him to a team that's done pretty well the last couple of years. I know a little disappointing last year that the Jags uh, faltered down the stretch and missed the playoffs, but he becomes their clear backup there under Trevor. And we've seen this where guys, you know, they – they're, they're a starter, they go become a backup for a year or two, and then they reset and they become a, st a starter again. So I, I think Mac Jones, the opportunity could be there for him to be a starter in 2025. Uh, if he uh, does all the right things in Jacksonville, they're obviously not going to pick up his fifth-year option because he's a clear backup. But um, go be a good backup and then, you know, see where the cards fall. There's always teams 
uh, looking for starting quarterbacks. So I would not be surprised at all in free agency in 2025 if uh, he gets an opportunity to at least compete for a starting job. That obviously won't happen at Jacksonville. He's a clear backup there. But um, I think uh, uh, the future uh, could be could be nice to Mac. He just he needs to reset a little bit. The 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 mechanics, the footwork, uh, you know, it all started to collapse as well. Like it all works together. Like his poor play wasn't just the pieces around him were bad. He just he wasn't stepping into throws. You could tell he wasn't trusting certain players. Like it just it wasn't good. It all collapsed very very quickly, and uh, it just it never got back. The train never got back on the tracks, uh, if you will. Now, from a financial perspective, this saves the Patriots about two point seven million bucks. So that brings their already league leading cap space back up another few million bucks. I know they just signed. Uh, that offensive tackle the other day, but um, they're still hovering close to $100 million. Uh, tomorrow, the legal tampering period begins as teams are allowed to begin negotiating uh, with free agents uh, for contracts. They can't become official till Wednesday, but a lot of these deals become agreed to on Monday and Tuesday. So uh, we'll see how the Patriots start to uh, use those resources. Now, quarterback. What does quarterback look like? I think Bailey Zappi is going to still be here, at least for now. I think the Patriots will explore the bridge gap veteran market. Like, what does Jacoby Brissett cost? Uh, is Joe Flacco interested? I know he came out and said he'd prefer to stay in Cleveland, but could they bring him in here? Gardner Minshew is another name. Ryan Tannehill. All these guys, you know, Tyrod Taylor, a lot of them are going to be similar price tag. I think Brissett's going to be on the upper side of it. Like, he could be in that, you know, $10 million per year range. Patriots have the money to do that. Would you go that route? Would you go maybe a tier below? Because you do have Bailey Zappi, who at least has some experience and has won some games for you. Um, I I think there's a pretty good chance the Patriots carry three quarterbacks. Uh, They'll draft one. I think they'll sign a vet. And then I think Zappi is probably still on this roster uh, in 2024. Maybe they try to flip him for like a sixth or a seventh as well. But I I think he'll probably be here also. Uh, I would I would look to upgrade in that bridge department from Zappy. I you know I like Brissett. I think he'll cost a pretty penny, but on a one year deal, I think it's worth it with where the Patriots are salary cap wise. Bring him in here that way. If the rookie isn't ready, you can roll out Jacoby Brissett or Gardner Minshew or whoever week one and not feel like it's going to be an absolute disaster. Um, but that being said, I would still heavily be considering drafting a quarterback at three. I know there's this idea the Patriots may not do that. They may trade down. They may draft Marvin Harrison Jr., which drafting MHJ is not a bad option. Like, I'm not going to sit here and bitch and moan if that happens. But um, I I just think unless you just really don't like the quarterbacks available after the top two picks, uh, and if you don't, you shouldn't draft one uh, at three. But if you do, then just take one. Don't overthink it. You got to get quarterback right. That's – that's the bottom line here. So I would expect some kind of rookie and veteran combination along with Zappy as the third guy on this roster, uh, and that will reshape this room. And then obviously, rest of the roster, uh, you, you, you got to piece together. You got to add some receivers. I saw a report that Patriots are expected to be big time in on Calvin Ridley. I think that's probably a good move. He's clearly the top receiver available in free agency after Mike Evans resigned and T. Higgins and Michael Pittman got franchise tag. It's kind of Calvin Ridley up here. And then it's like a tear down before he gets like Marquise Brown and Darnell Mooney and Curtis Samuel and, you know, players like that. So, like, Ridley's the closest thing to a true number one. I, I'd call him like a 1B. He's certainly not on a, you know, I don't know, a Tyreek Hill level or something like that or even a Keenan Allen or a DJ Moore or someone. But he's like a notch below that. He'd be a number one for this team for sure. He'd be a number one for probably a third of the league. He's, you know, he's top 20-ish, top 25 receiver. He's a good player. Uh, I would pay for that if I was New England. They need playmakers, and uh, Ridley would be the best playmaker on this offense by a while. You brought back Hunter Henry. I like that. They had to overpay a bit. Uh, oh, by the way, so with that deal, they're probably more in like the $90 million range. I uh, misspoke earlier, but um, you got Henry back. If you could get Calvin Ridley and then figure out quarterback, that, that's not bad. We'll see what the other position groups look like. Uh, they could add two receivers. That's certainly a possibility, but uh, bringing back Kendrick Bourne has been discussed. So we'll see where else they go. Obviously, offensive line, are they in on Tyron Smith? Do they bring back Michael Winnu? All those discussions yet to be finalized. All right, 
There you have it. Mac Jones traded to the Jags for a sixth round pick. Uh, best of luck to him. Just didn't work out the last couple of years, but uh, I do think it's a good landing spot for him. And I think getting him off this roster was uh, much needed by New England. My name is Harrison Graham. We'll see you guys soon. Be sure to subscribe. Lots of content to come in the coming days.